Iconic Cake Gang, it's Selva here, and today out of all things we do like cake, ceramic, sweets, and food related stuff, I'm going to show you how to make a no glue paper bag to package small food items like cookies, croissant, or small pastries. I did use a bit of tape at the top to seal it, but if you have washi tape, that would work too. So let's get started. You'll need a pretty large piece of paper, craft paper is economical and great for food, plus it's inexpensive too. Over here, I am using a 12 by 12 inch square piece of craft paper. And the first thing we're gonna do is fold it diagonally. Then we're gonna fold the triangle again in half and repeat it one more time. Basically, what we're doing over here is creating creases without working so hard. Once you're done, give it a good massage before opening the folds. I'm going a tad slow in this video so you can follow along. Anyhow, you're probably thinking, can I also use gift wrapping paper? Oh yes, you can certainly use any kind of paper that is somewhat thick. Flimsy paper might work too as long as it's not coated with that cellophane kind of coating or UV coating. But keep in mind that you won't be able to put anything super heavy in it. Plastic coated paper makes things also slippery. So if you were to make any kind of origami with it, chances are the folds will come apart and then you're gonna be pretty much mad at me. So carrying on, once you unfold all the folds you created, the next step is to fold the sheet in half. You can use the creases that you have previously made as a guide. Then you're gonna tuck in the diagonal folds inwards on the left and right. So you're left with a triangular shape. This triangular shape should contain a total of four sexy little flaps. All right, so we're almost done. Now, this is the most complex part in the entire process, but it's a breeze once you get the idea. Flip your triangle upside down so its pointy part points downwards. Then fold one third of the tip over the triangle. Getting back to our previous miscellaneous discussion about the uses of this bag, gift wrapper would be a great option. But if you want to give something to an ex or a frenemy, you can totally make this bag super kinky. This is actually the best time to show them what they're missing out on. So what you should do is crumple the paper like crazy before beginning this entire tutorial and then make the bag. It might look smashed, but this is the look that you're going for anyways. Just make sure that you don't put anything like super heavy in it or your items might fall out of the bag before you even hand it over. If that happens, take it as a sign of bad karma and drop the idea. Okay, enough of me chatting, we need to focus on the actual tutorial now. We're almost done anyways. This is the part where you need to look at me folding the paper carefully. What we're doing now is using the mini triangle that we folded in the bottom as a guide to make the width of our bags wide. However, on one side, you kind of need to do a funky fold, but it isn't challenging. This fold is what will create a lock tab, which will hold our bag together in place. You'll need to repeat the step for the front and back with all four flaps. Now you'll see two horny shapes. I mean, uh, I mean, oh my God, I mean two horn-like shapes at the top of the rectangular origami shape. These flaps will be later tucked in to hold the bag together. In the meanwhile, remember the little triangle that we folded at the bottom? You can unfold that little triangle if you find it easier to make the other folds. Okay, hold on for just a few seconds more. Let me show you where you need to tuck in the triangular flaps on top. It doesn't need to be precise here, but basically what I did was sort of pushed that flap in without getting my paper all kinked up. It doesn't matter how you push or fold it. If it helps, just pop your finger in and get a feel for how much you can push in, then crease. Once you do so, give it a good massage so the crease is sharp. You need to do this to the other triangular flap as well. Easy peasy. Once all your triangular flaps are tucked in, you're pretty much done. All you need to do is open the bag. Just keep in mind that since the bottom of the bag is just one layer, it's great to hold light items. I think I said that a million times, but you know, it doesn't hurt to remind you unless you decide to warrior it out and fold it with a stiffer cardstock. I prefer to use washi tape, but for the purpose of this video, I used a transparent tape just to show how the bag would look like if I wanted to close it. The tape really helps close the bag. I know that with the average brown paper bag, you can roll the opening down a couple times to close the bag, but in this case, it's a little different because the bags will be smaller unless you decide to use a massive size of craft paper. But for smaller bags, I recommend using a bit of tape to close it, if you wanna close it, that is. Oh, and another tip for opening the bag is to tap the pointy part towards the table a couple times. This will flatten the bag and it's much easier than trying to flatten it with your fingers. And from there on, you're good to go. See, you have made your very own brown paper bag from a square piece of paper. Impressive, eh? Believe it or not, I used to use 
comic strips from newspapers when I was in high school to make my own recyclable lunch bags. So I was able to squeeze it in my school bag and not feel like I need to carry like a million things. Plus, let me tell you, my newspaper comic strip lunch bag was pretty cool and artsy. So I recommend it if you can't find a large enough paper lying around. Just make sure that it's clean. So that's a wrap for now. Hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you make these bags, let me know how it went in the comments below. I would love to know what you think and I'll see you guys next time. Until then, bye for now.